Hi, I'm Anthony Ricks. I'm CEO of Granta Innovation. Uh, let me start by talking about uh, uh, my goal for this presentation. I'd like to explain to you why I think AI is broken for a lot of enterprise applications uh, and then what we're doing to fix it. Firstly, what do we do? Uh, Granta Innovation is a consulting firm focusing on AI for business. We do what it says on the tin, we research, we consult, and we develop AI systems for ambitious companies. We're using this to develop our own platforms that effectively meet reusable uh, needs across many business sectors. We're grounded in quite deep research. I can't boast six um, Cambridge PhDs, but I, I'm a Cambridge graduate myself, and I have a PhD too, um, uh, across emerging technologies. Uh, one of our favorite areas is blockchain debunking, so if you're interested to hear uh, me telling it as it is about blockchain uh, or find out more about our research on AI and AI ethics, please subscribe at our website. I'm going to talk about now about four hard problems with AI. The first big challenge is actually knowing what you can do and how. If you're trying to do image recognition or speech recognition, those are fairly well-trodden paths. But if you're an enterprise with business processes that you want to improve or to automate, it's a much harder problem. What do you do? Do you use deep, uh, deep learning? Do you use Bayesian regression? Uh, you know, the, 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 the tools, the challenges are major. Uh, and just hiring data scientists doesn't solve the problem because they don't necessarily have the cross-disciplinary grounding that you need. You need a lot of data. Uh, to do a large deep learning model, uh, you need millions, millions of data points, and they can be incredibly expensive to source. There are some things that deep learning can't do, uh, and I'll talk more about one of those. Um, and lastly, something that you do need to be aware of is vendor lock-in. It's relatively easy to go to the major platforms and take them your data uh, and build a workflow that, that, uh, that, that meets uh, you know, the needs, perhaps, of your short-term business opportunities, but then you're locked in. Um, how do you navigate that? Our general approach to this is a very human-focused one. We bring experienced people. Uh, we understand what our customers are trying to do. Uh, we're capable of doing the very fundamental enabling research that needs to be done uh, to solve your problems, uh, or, or just to fill in the gaps and find other people who've solved the problem too. Uh, we've got the scale to build a system uh, working with our customer and with top-class partners. Uh, and then we work inside our customers to train their teams, to grow their knowledge, because ultimately, for us, the success of our customer will lie in them being able to take that AI business further forward. Uh, and lastly, we can be there to support you over the next decade as you put these systems into production. I'm going to talk about my first AI startup. The company was called Cytechnics. We solved a, a really sim simple but difficult problem. How do you rate the quality of a phone call? It's the 1990s. Mobile and VoIP are going to transform the way that the world communicates. But if they're going to do that, we need to solve some really hard problems that exist today about quality. And if we can't measure quality, we can't fix it, we can't manage it. The way you measure quality is well understood uh, and standardized by the International Telecommunication Union, the ITU, uh, and it uses this scale called the mean opinion score, a simple one to five rating from bad to excellent. The reason this is hard for AI uh, comes down to three problems. The first is how do we represent sounds in the way that people hear them? and also represent the things that people don't hear, because there's no point us saying that something's been distorted if actually the change was imperceptible to the human ear. The second challenge is how do we hear differences in the way that people do? Uh, and the third is predicting quality, building up enough data to persuade an entire industry, the telecoms industry, uh, to uh, accept uh, the evidence of what you're doing as being truly the solution that scales um, for their business. I built this for my PhD. Uh, we got to better than human performance in 2001. The model looks like this. It's quite unlike 
any of the classic AI systems that you'll be familiar with. Uh, the way it works, since I've got a speech processing person in the room, uh, we transform uh, the input to the network and the output. Uh, we then have several stages where we can compare these. We extract the errors as a human would have heard them uh, and use that to predict quality. But even in working in, for seven years in this space, I got 500 data points. So this was not a candidate for deep learning. But the thing that's funny now is people are using this model to train deep learning algorithms uh, because you can start to apply deep Q learning. What I hope is that this has illustrated to you how human creativity and the involvement of an expert who's grounded in deep fundamentals of research in the space can allow you to do something that's genuinely different. So I'm looking for companies who'd like to do something like that for their business. Uh, and if that's you, get in touch. My business cards are at the back, and I'd also encourage you to subscribe at our website, and we'll send you our latest research on AI and on blockchain. Thank you very much.